Hello everyone. Once after Easter Sunday service in his church, a man said to his friend, You know, I have attended this church for five years now, and each time the priest preached on the same topic. Doesn't he have something else to talk about? His friend said to him, Oh yes, I know, you have been attending the service for five years, but only on Easter Sunday, and that's why you always hear the homily only on the resurrection of Christ. Friends, two days ago, I happened to talk to a lapsed Catholic. He said when he went to Easter Sunday Mass this year, he was quite surprised to witness a lively exchange between the priest and his congregation during his homily. He further said that it was something that he had never expected. I said that it is not something unusual. There are many ways to give a homily. Many priests do make their homilies more engaging. His comment and expression seemed to suggest that all of a sudden he saw some change in the church. So I asked him if you thought that the church has changed much since the last time you went to church, will you continue to go? He strongly replied, No, I will not. Friends, if you are a regular church goer, you have probably noticed more people attend services on Easter Sunday and Christmas Day than any other days of the year. It is unfortunate many people do not return to church the following days. I believe one of the main reasons is that most of them have become wary, doubtful, skeptical, and sadly even cynical regarding the Christian faith and the church. Today's Gospel reminds us that it is a constant struggle to keep our eyes fixed on our Lord Jesus, and that we really should become a part of God's church to find answers to many existential issues. John writes, On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst. But he also points out that Thomas, one of the disciples, was not with them when Jesus came. John does not mention the reason why Thomas was absent. But it is obvious Thomas missed something very important and special. He missed the appearance of Jesus. When others informed him of the appearance of the Lord, he refused to accept it and said, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Friends, Thomas was determined not to miss their next gathering. For him, the witness of others was important, but his personal encounter with the Lord was more important. So a week later, when the disciples were again praying, Jesus came and stood among them. After greeting them, Jesus turned to Thomas and invited him to touch the nail marks in his hands and believe. Immediately Thomas fell down and worshipped him, saying, My Lord and my God. Friends, it is clear that Thomas did not even stretch forth his hand to touch Jesus. When the others told Thomas that they had seen Jesus, he just could not believe it. But when he finally did see Jesus, his doubt turned into faith, his unbelief into belief. Friends, what lessons can we learn from this Gospel story? Our faith is not an isolated act. We are baptized into the faith of the Church. The seed of faith which is sown in us at baptism grows through the Church, through its beliefs, traditions, worship, community, witness and loving deeds. The Church enables us to understand and deepen our faith. You may recall on the first Easter day, when the women went to the tomb to look for the dead body of Jesus, 
two angels appeared to them and said that they should not seek the living Jesus among the dead, but among the living, because Jesus was resurrected and was in their midst. And in today's Gospel, John says that Jesus appeared to the disciples as they were praying together. Yes, this was the promise Jesus made to them. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Friends, on the first day of the week, Sunday, the early Christians began meeting and praying together. Since then, Sunday has become the day of the Lord. It is the day of joy and the day of rest. It is the day of prayer and worship. It is at the Sunday gathering for the weekly celebration of Easter that we are given the best opportunity to see our living Jesus among us. Some might say that the quality of a relationship with God or faith in God is not determined by how often we are in church and God's love for us is not based on the number of times we attend formal gatherings of believers and so on. However, there is no doubt that attending and participating in the Holy Mass every week assures us that we are at least among God's people. It is the day to have fellowship with people of all races, cultures and languages, but worship and proclaim the same God and read and reflect on the same scriptures. It is the day we can publicly bear witness to our faith. It is the day to encourage one another and strengthen our faith and get answers to all our problems. Therefore, let us not isolate ourselves from other believers. If you are a regular churchgoer, remember that Sunday Mass is more than an obligation. If we stay away from the gatherings of believers, like Thomas, we might miss the opportunity to witness the appearance of Jesus and our doubts might remain with us for years to come. Amen. God bless you.